Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today let's have a first look into the new SimBrief layout. I just opened up SimBrief to plan a flight and was really surprised to find the new layout, but after looking around it for a little bit I really start to like it. So let's go ahead and explore a couple of the new options. The most important change in my opinion is the one that we can find on the top right up here and that is actually the dark mode. So if we click on this then we can change SimBrief into a dark layout and that is something that always hit me when I used SimBrief in the past because when my eyes are accustomed to a dark simulator when flying at night and all of a sudden I have to bring up SimBrief and I'm getting this super bright panel that really hurt in the eyes and they've added the dark mode which is something I do really appreciate. Also the website is now optimized not only for use on desktop computers but also on mobile devices like an iPhone or a tablet so that makes it really more usable. But let's have a look into how we are going to plan a flight today because things have changed quite a bit. Now the new way to the flight plans one thing, we have them visible up here. We also have a couple of statistics like how many flight plans have I created on what day, which aircraft types did I plan and surprise, surprise, we find a couple Boeing 737s for me up here, but also a couple A320s because I did fly them a little bit more recently. And on the bottom up here, we can see the flights I planned most recently. And that is just today. I'm planning one over here from Dusseldorf to Nice in the A320. Now, if we just want to view our last flight plan that we have planned, we can just go on the view flight plan button up here. But let's go ahead and actually plan a new one. I've planned Dusseldorf to Nice, now let's go ahead and plan the return flight. And we do that clicking up here. And now we can simply go on new flight and that leads us into the flight planning menu. Now the flight planning menu has changed quite a bit in its layout. So let's have a look into how we are going to plan a flight now. On today's flight, we are going to be the Abilene 9421, and we'll fly from Nice towards Dusseldorf. And our alternate airport, I'm just going to manually select it, is going to be Dortmund. The departure time for this one, let's say we want to go, we click onto this menu, this changed a little bit. Let's say we want to go at uh, 1640, for example, so we can simply select this from the drop down and apply this. Now on the airframe info we can now select either on the left the airplane type or if we have a pre-saved pre airplane we just can select it from the drop down list that we can see up here and um, that's for example let's go down and select a Phoenix A320 as we have it up here and just be sure that correct alternate is still in after you've selected an airplane type. And now we can basically change all our stuff over here. Like I'm using a custom registration for every of the aircraft I fly. So just select it from here. And um, then we can select our call sign up here as well. Which in this case let's choose Abilene to Echo Juliet. Now going further down. We basically find all the options that we previously had as well, but with a couple of new options added as well. So let's have a look in a couple of the new options. Um, let's say I want a fly time of 145 scheduled, departure runway, arrival runway, that's all okay. We'll leave your altitude in auto. Now, here's something new. On the passenger menu, you no longer have the automatic um, selection of the passengers by clicking on the drop down on the side here that is only going to give you auto none or full so we have to type it manually so let's say we want 156 passengers but something that i find really nice is added on the uh, freight panel up here is that you get this little help menu now saying by default passenger baggage is automatically added on the passenger option only use this option to load any additional cargo and freight you would like to add in addition to the passenger baggage now that is something that i really appreciate them to add because it means that people are now told by the system that baggage is by default loaded. Because something I saw happening quite a bit was that people just loaded a couple of tons of cargo on top and then they added up with zero fuel weights that were far from realistic because they were just much too high. Also very nice is that they added the units now so we can see that the freight is in kilo, the zero fuel weight is in kilo up here. 
Going for the downland text entries, that is really just adding your name and adding a dispatcher name and stuff that's hidden by default because you don't really need it. And something else that is new here as well now on the root panel is that you have this find sit and star button. Previously, when you modified something in your root and the sit or star had been removed, then you always had to select a different ROM way in order to get a sit or star automatically added again. Now we just have this button and this opens up a panel showing us all the different sits that are available from the ROM way that we are planning. So we can just go like this, apply whatever we want to. The um, suggested root panels is still the same that it was before. The only thing that's changed here is the layout. So now we see, for example, that this one is planned as a Simbri flight. And of course, we still have all the old option, like for example, up here, selecting a AD glove for your ROM ways. And it now automatically pre-fills the flight information we need to. So let's just select something that we wanted up here, copy the ROM way. And now I'm going to show you why I said earlier that I like the new layout so much. And that's because now I've just taken my new route from Edigla. And of course, when I paste this in, it will not include any sits or stars. So I'm just about removing the um, altitude constraints here previously. Now click and analyze route, but this is without sit or star. So if I just go and find sit star now, then it's just automatically going to bring me to the page and I can add them without having to change the ROM ways like we previously did. Okay, so the options we have down here are pretty much the same we had earlier. It's just that they are hidden by default because they may not be that important the route finder, the alternate airport options, and so on. What's nice, though, is that we can define some custom minimum values in here now. We did not have these options for the alternate airports previously. Okay, so when you're done with your flight, we click on generate flight up here, and that's going to process our flight and calculate our flight plans. And now we're going to see a new menu here as well. Like, having a look at this now, we can see that... The layout has changed and we get this little flight plan summary and um, this little load sheet up here by default, which is quite nice because not all flight plan layouts previously included, for example, the amount of passengers, the cargo that, that resulted out of them and so on. But of course, if you still want to view your operational flight plan like you're used to, you can always just go down here on uh, briefing preview, show details, and that is still going to give you the operational flight plan as you're used to from before. Now, that's pretty much the new flight plan layout that we have up here. Something that I just quickly want to have a look at because I find it to be such a nice option is if we go over here and we go on the weather and no temp section, then in here we can, for example, look up airports and find no temps and weather information without having to actually calculate a flight for that. That's a very nice option if you just quickly have to look something up, for example, about an en route alternate and your aircraft doesn't have data link available. Cough, cough. Okay. So that's what we have here by default. And we can view, for example, North Atlantic tracks and have a look at the track messages and so on. But what's really nice if we um, just click ourselves around here and we use the populate from last flight tab. Now, it simply loads up our default flight that we have last planned, and you get all this information directly in here. Also, by the way, really nice, the um, ability to request different significant weather charts, basically bringing up the charts as they were from the uh, flight planning services without all the editing that Simreef does when it inserts your custom flight information on them. Now, this basically concludes the first look at the new Simbrief flight planning. You can be sure you are going to see this in action in a lot of my further videos. But for now, let me know what you think about the new option. Do you like what you see or do you prefer the old layout? I'm very much looking forward to read from you. Now, for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed something. And if you want to support the channel, then you can do it using the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member, which is going to get you exclusive access to new videos as they come along. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you all again very soon.